What's up, people? This is Ruben. Just giving you a quick heads up. I know y'all are expecting part three of the Damon interview. And I uh, apologize for not having a drop last week or this week, but Dana is handling the editing duties for that particular episode, and she has been swamped to the gills. So I don't know why I just put on a radio announcer voice. That's annoying. Sorry about that, people. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to get that up next week, hopefully. And in the meantime, you can sit back and listen to the dulcet tones of the Sausage Fest. That's right. Me and Carlos sat down for a podcast where we get a little deep, man. We're going to talk about some stuff. Um, not not as uh, full of yucks as most of our podcasts are, but this is uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty good one, I think. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get this monkey uh, grinder box thing going. All right. Have a good one, people. Strap on those ear goggles, bitches. It's time for some pop goulash. I'm Ruben. And I am Carlos. And we are, uh, we're back. We are, dude. Ish. We are back. It's, it's, it, it feels good. It feels, I can't even talk. I'm so excited. Yeah. It feels good to be back in the bat cave. Back in the high life again. <laughs> Now, uh, Dana would like to be here tonight. She's uh, suffering from a bit of a stomach flu. So uh, our thoughts once again go out to Dana. <laughs> she will be back sitting here with us. It's not going to always just be me and Dana or me and Carlos. We right. will all three be sitting in the fat. In the, I was going to call it the fat cave. The three amigos will right, rise. Right. So, but yeah, so it's been, it literally has been well over a month since we've sat down to Crazy. chat. I know. So how, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm Chevy Chase by the way in that scenario. Three amigos. I would be Martin Short, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, would be Steve Martin. I would think so. That's such a great movie. Dude, it's one of the best, man. It's one of the best. <laughs> I used to I remember like as a kid that used to be on constant repeat on uh on HBO. Yes. So I used to watch it all the fucking time. HBO After Dark. Oh, dude, that was when it got good. Yep. <laughs> would you say that I have a plethora of gifts? Yes, sir. I would definitely say you have a plethora of gifts. Do you know how many a plethora is? <laughs> El Guapo. Oh, yeah. El Guapo. Yeah. My little buttercup. <laughs> That's a great song in the bar. Dude, that whole movie is just fantastic. I haven't seen it in years, dude. It's probably been 20 years since I've seen it easily. It's you know what it's in the same vein of movies like we were talking about previously about uh, planes, trains, automobiles. Yeah. I which by the way it wasn't Kenosha. I watched it. Did I you? Home, yeah, I watched it the following day. Right on. And you know what? It wasn't Kenosha that he was going to in Home Alone. He was going to Sheboygan. Wisconsin? Yes. Remember when I was talking? I couldn't remember what. <laughs> it was in Home Alone when he, when uh, Kevin's mom got stuck in the back of the van with, with, the, polka. John, with the polka band. Yeah. They were from Sheboygan. And not, it was John Candy. And it was John Candy. They weren't going to uh, to uh, Kenosha. They were going to Sheboygan. Yeah, I do remember that. I, I don't know. There's something about those. Are we going to do our uh, cheers, by the way? Salute. What do we, you want to let them know? Or do we are having a nice little shot of some bullet rye this evening. Here we go. Bottoms up. That's good. <laughs> That's, see, now you see like, why I like Let to sip Let me catch it. my breath for a second. Yeah, that is really good. It's good to sip. I don't like taking it as a shot, but it's good to sip. You know what? A little I bit think, of ice. Yes, let's do that next time. For sure. So It's almost like a celebration drink when you have it in a little tiny glass. Yeah, but you don't... So, I, you I don't can't get to enjoy it as much. Yeah, I can't celebrate with whiskey. Like, It's not tequila, you know. I don't know about you guys, but when I drink whiskey or bourbon or whatever it's always with a little bit of uh tap water oh really yeah well i was i I saw a headline and it was too long so i didn't read the article but they said that really was it on buzzfeed dude somewhere you know (laughs) uh but it was talking about how like whiskey needs a little water to really like bring out the flavors open it it up Yeah, yeah for sure you know what i can't stand 
And this is has nothing to do with whiskey. People or, that hold their pinky out when they hold their glass. Ah, that doesn't bother me. Be fancy. I don't give a shit. No, <laughs> Dipley. Diddly, what's that? Dipley. It's a oh, website. Oh, Dipley. Yes. Okay. Like they have like really interesting stuff on there. I think sometimes, but I don't want to have to page through seventeen mm. to thirty-seven pages to get to the end of it. Yeah. Like I'm glad that Cracked finally has gone through and made it. Just like a full page, and you'd scroll down, and there'd be some ads. Yeah, and that's fine. You can deal with, but like, I don't want to have to like like page through like forty five different things to get to like the sixteen dumbest things people have ever said. Like, yeah, dude, seriously, because number one is broken up over like four different pages. Yeah, like they like write three sentences. I'm like, look, I already read children's (laughs) books, okay, nightly. To the kids, I don't want to have to read a children's book's worth of shit. The best thing is when people reveal what all they are. When like, there's some people that will do the work for you, and then the comments of like Facebook on mm-hmm. that particular ad, yeah, will reveal everything there for you, so you don't even have to flip through all of it. Yeah, but a lot of times too, what most people will do is comment on whatever the image that's showing. Right. Like, like it'll be like. I don't know, the 25 craziest things to do with a banana, and it'll show, like, a chihuahua and a banana and, like, a pair of clogs. And somebody will be like, I don't think that the chihuahua should be in the picture with the clogs and the banana. I think this is cultural appropriation, and it's wrong. <laughs> and you're like, you didn't even read the fucking article, you artard. What are you doing? Oh, that's those are people that are looking for something to argue about. Yeah. Well, it was like, have you seen that video of... Uh, Somebody took a video and edited over it, and it's like a cat, like, batting at a dog, and it says, like, your Jedi powers are strong, and it's, like, they've superimposed, like, lightsabers in the the cat. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, dude. Let me see if I can find it. It was on Facebook earlier, but it was, like, um... I mean, is it was it intended to be humorous? Yeah, obviously? absolutely, absolutely. It was just this dog getting the shit smacked out of it by a cat, and they put lightsabers in the cat's paws, right? Because that shit is funny. It's almost as good as Benny Hen with a lightsaber. Yes, it's the exact same thing, but it's a dog <laughs> and a cat, and somebody's like, "This just Yum. right," and people are like, "This just isn't funny." Like. The cats could be hurt by the dog, and I don't think that's funny for a cat to be fighting a dog, and the dog wants to eat to kill the cat, and it's just sad, and this shouldn't be on the internet. Go fuck yourself. Can we just appreciate humor? Can we just, like, if you don't like it... Not be so butthurt all the time? Dude, seriously, can we just... If you don't like it, just don't comment on it. Just don't watch it and let it slide by. Or report it on Facebook. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, But you know what, though? In all fairness, like, I, I belong to, like, this barbecue smoking group. Right. And, like, every now and again, somebody will post, like, some stupid shit that has nothing to do with, like, neither barbecuing nor smoking food. And, like, the other day it was like, they threw two bags of carrots into this toilet and you wouldn't believe what happened next. And you click on it because you're like, why? I want to see what happens when you throw two. Yeah. And you find out that it's an ad for, like, some mega toilet. And, like, that, dude, seriously, it has nothing to do with barbecuing. Right. Right? So, fuck yeah, I'm going to report that to the to the uh uh to the admins of the page like come on dude seriously so i like the ads though that um have nothing to do with the product really the commercials okay like an insurance company will show like this uh you know kid going off to college and the parents are crying mm-hmm. and then he comes back and he's older and he has this girl with him and then they have a kid and the kid grows up and they're all using the same car yeah, so it's a car that's been passed on generations, and it happens to be at the same insurance carrier. Right, it's or, heartwarming. But. Yeah, or or my favorite are the ones where it's like, um, <clears throat> somebody like they're riding horseback along the beach, <laughs> and then all of a sudden somebody's playing like sand beach volleyball, and like there's. Next thing you see, there's, like, a puppy playing with, like, something and a cat with, like, a ball of yarn. And they're like, Lunesta, help you get your Zs. <laughs> like, how is... What? Why? That's, that's Who? catfished by advertising Dude, companies. it's the worst. They pull you in with your heartstrings. You know what started that? What's that? Tampon commercials. Really? You think so? Oh, it had to have been. Like, at least in, in that sense. Like, I can go swimming now. Or, like... Right. Mom, do you ever feel not so fresh? (laughs) 
Oh man. <laughs> I, I I actually saw something on on Facebook where sorry, I'm swallowing. I've got this post nasal drip thing going on. It's the best. Yay allergies. Yes. And uh it was the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, well, it's not the clap. Nor is it herpes, but it's just not fun. Um and I totally lost my train of thought. You were talking about tampons in uh, not so feeling oh, fresh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I saw somebody say, Well, why do you have to use a douche to represent something like why does it have to be a women's feminine product for you guys to like you know, put somebody down. I'm like, I don't know, because you're not supposed to use douches because they're irritants and they can cause infections. And what is a douche? Somebody who's an irritant and could possibly cause you an infection. Right. Fucking douche. Oh, I see what you're saying. So using a feminine product to describe Such somebody as, that's an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm like, get over yourself. Like, you know, I guess it's easy for me to say as a straight white female or... Mel? Wait, what's going I'm on? I'm sorry, here? my Freudian slip is showing. <laughs> <laughs> See? All right, so full disclosure, this is what happens. Like, um, I, uh, I was diagnosed recently with clinical depression. And this is not a joke. No, 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 this is not a bit. This is, this is serious. And uh, I, I just I want to put this out there because there's, there's a stigma to, di- to depression, and it got to the point where I'm like, finally, I needed to go talk. And I, I went to go see my physician and, uh, you know, they, they sat me down for like a 30 minute consultation. They're like, yeah, you fit the mold for clinical depression. Uh, we're going to prescribe you a medication and but, fuck you. Um, <clears throat> we're going to prescribe you medication and we're going to, you know, uh, they recommended me to a counselor, which I just set an appointment today for a couple right. weeks out. And uh, so the medication they've got me on, I can't drink like I used to. So, so like, it impacts you more? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you'll be saving some money. That's a good this thing. This is true. Like I, But I'm, I'm not a big drinker to begin with. Right. But like the beer that I had and this little bit of uh, whiskey that we've, we've had is, uh, I can feel it. Like <laughs> I'm swimmy right now. It's it's, but it, I mean, like caffeine affects me differently now. Like it enhances caffeine. It's crazy. Like I've never. So, but so uh, someone that's never dealt with that mm-hmm. is it one of those things where you you just wake up and it's like this filter has been removed. How things, so? Well, things are. Your outlook changes. You, you while you're on the medication. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It's not like the outlook changes. So f- what was going on with me is that I I don't know if it's just you know now having two kids, doing this new job, doing this other thing. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in my life right now. Right. And it was, and I don't know if it's a form of anxiety, which you know, going to see a psychologist is going to help try to and all that can be completely overwhelming oh yeah but for some people anxiety like shuts them in okay and they their anxiety attacks will cause them you know palpitations and this that and the other and where physical reactions physical reactions to it and it will cause them to you know want to shut themselves in and not want to go out and deal with things and i i had a little bit of that like but for me my anxiety would manifest in anger Hmm. and like i found myself snapping on the kids not like doing physical anything but like i would yell or i would get to the point where i'd get so angry that i'd have to was very very lowered yeah yeah i'd have to remove myself from the from the room just to be like look i can't handle this like i i am i'm putting myself on a daddy timeout right now because I didn't, I'm not being very nice and it's not nice to you guys. Um, you know, it would manifest as anger and tension in my neck mm. and my back. And it's just, it just wasn't a good place for me to be in. And it was affecting my relationship with my wife and my children. And I, I finally told Kirsten, I'm like, look, I'm depressed. I don't, I don't, I feel sad. I feel hopeless, lost. I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know why I feel this way. Like I've got the world at my fingertips, right. you know, um, and I'm not bragging. I'm not, but 
I'm in a place right now where I'm better off than I've ever been in my life. And so, you know, it's not circumstantial. No, how you're feeling. Uh, uh-uh. no, it's not circumstantial at all because I mean, dude, I love my life. I love my wife. I yeah. love my kids. You know, I like my job. Like everything is going the, like the trajectory of like, you know, shit in your life that would lead towards happiness is like on a upslope in a good way. I would say probably the pinnacle of it for you would be to see me once a week. Yeah. Down here. Well, you, you know, you fuckers haven't been around. So maybe that was it. Maybe <laughs> I just need to record more podcasts with you guys. <laughs> maybe. But um, it, it, it was one of those where I just couldn't wrap my head around where I was at and why I was feeling this way. Like, you know, Kirsten took the kids outside and they were out in the pool. Yes, we have a pool. It's an above ground pool. Don't fucking shit yourself. It's not Got that a great. Nice people. shade of green. No, it's fixed. Is it? Dude, it's beautiful. Just in time for it to be 60 degrees outside. <laughs> so, um, it's, but, it's one of those things where you're looking outside and you're like, why, in why the are, hell am I feeling this way? Well, yeah. Why am I not outside with them having fun? Right. I, I'm just going to sit inside and stare at the TV and not really even pay attention to what's going on. Like, it's just, it, it, it's not a sadness. It's just a haze. That is like clouded everything. It's like a cloud over your head. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, looking back on my life, like that has been kind of a constant in my life. It's just this, like, you know, yeah, I have had great moments and I've been happy and I've felt joy, but a lot of it has just been, it's just been, you know, it's a, just a dull emotional experience. Like you feel, it's not that you don't feel and you you don't feel anything. It's that you feel it, but it's just dull right like the edges are taken off of it the shine is removed from it you know and it's not it's not because of anyone or any person or circumstance or anything like that right and it's nobody's fault there's you know i mean so nothing you would is... have moments where you deviate from that baseline yeah and i'd be fine it would always sort of be there yeah yeah it would always sort of be there in the distance or in the background but i mean there are times where like i've like like i was telling my doctor i'm like look i'm going to a concert tomorrow night I should be excited about it. Right. And I'm just like, eh, I'm going to concert. Eh, whatever. You know? Mm-hmm. And it, it was it was for the Green Day concert at Wrigley. And I hadn't seen Green Day in 20 years. Like, I should be excited to go see this band. And I was just like... Open air. Yeah. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Beautiful awesome evening. Band. And I'm just like, eh. Yeah, I'm going to see this band. Now. I'm going to... Yeah, whatever. You know? So, you know, in light of... Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington and and these guys who fought with the depression themselves. Like I've I, I've never had the suicidal thoughts mm-hmm. or inclination. But if if you're dude, f- everybody listening out there, fuck the stigma, man. Just be, you know, if you're feeling down or if you're feeling like something ain't right, go talk to somebody, please. Yeah. Like do yourself the favor. Like, and you know, like the big thing for me was I felt the stigma of taking the medication. You know, I didn't want to feel like I was going to be a, an, an emotional zombie on the medication, you know, cause you hear about that, you know, oh, there, you don't feel the highs, you don't feel the lows. You just, or you hear about people wanting to over medicate people, right? Doctors want to know the over medication of it and, or the under medication of it. And then you hear about people dropping off of it and then you have, you know, a school shooting because somebody just decided I'm not taking my meds anymore, you know, but, um, I think with the proper treatment and if like you really, cause like I'm look, I feel great right now. Right. And I haven't even talked to a counselor yet, but I'm not going to stop taking my meds. Cause I know that like it's helping, you know, and I know that it's the medication that's helping me right now. And I'm not going to be so blinded to be like, I feel great. I don't need those meds. You know, think, don't you think if uh, I mean left unchecked, if you decided not to do anything with this and you just sort of spiraled deeper, that it could potentially those thoughts of suicide or something like that could possibly enter your head? I don't know. I can't really. I can't really speak to that. Yeah. Because like, I mean, I I could say you know after f- nearly forty years of dealing with this, you've done a pretty good job of dealing with it, right? So, I mean, I can't say that, but then again, you never know. Yeah, and I think the stigma, too, is uh, the idea of, you know, why don't you just 
get over it, dude. You have so much to be happy about. Why are you acting like this? Right. And it's and it's a chemical imbalance. Right. Like you're It's not like a decision that you're making. I'm I'm gonna choose right now to just sort of be in this haze. Right. Yeah. While it's like my family and friends are having fun. Right. Yeah. So like, I wanna eh, be a bummer. You know, this this is this is awesome for me to do right now. <laughs> exactly. You know. And <clears throat> And then it compounds on itself because then you start you start feeling bad because you're feeling, you're feeling bad. Way. Yeah. And you, then you're like and it, it really kind of clouds not necessarily judgment, at least not for me, but you it get really these voices in your head. Well, not even a voice in my head, but it was just more like thinking that my relationship was on the rocks with my wife. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, like because I'm doubting myself and I'm just having these weird emotions that like I you start projecting. You're like, well, I feel miserable right now, so obviously she's miserable with me. So, you know, I got to make sure that I ask her 20 times a day if everything's okay, which I'm sure, you know, it's... Uh, And then you feel bad that she's having to reassure you at all. Right. 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 But, I mean, (laughs) luckily, she's been very, you know, supportive through all of this. So when do you go to counseling? Uh, my first appointment's on the 18th. So you guys may not know this. I've, I've been going to therapy once a week since, gosh, since March or April. Mm -hmm. And, um, there used to be, so that has a stigma too. Yeah. I, I've actually, um, I've done therapy. I've been through therapy once before and I did it for like a year or so. Sorry. I'm fucking with the levels as I'm talking, but I, I, I had therapy for about a year. And it was helpful, but my therapist was in Chicago, and then I didn't feel like finding a different therapist when I lived in the burbs. So I was like, "Ah, fuck right. it," you know. And it helped; it well, really did, man. Talking to somebody like somebody who is like, like third degree away from you, who doesn't really know you, like that can help you really put some perspective on it because and they're who's not educated enough and uh, has ex- enough experience to be able to be a reasonable voice, right? Because they're not your friend. You know, there's so no they're bias. not, there's no bias there. Right. So please, guys, do yourself the favor. <laughs> talk to somebody, you know, go talk to, like, it all started with me going to my physician, my primary care physician, you know, like saying my, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. Like I told, I, I called the office and I'm like, hey, you know what? Um, I think I'm f- experiencing depression and anxiety and I really, I, I don't know what the next step is. So I came in and they t- gave me a profile and wow. that's, this is where I'm at. So guys, just, you know, just, it's scary. When I when I first started therapy, um, that first phone call, man, was was huge. Yeah, and it's and it's all a matter of taking that and first it, step. And, and you're not going to be. St- and if anybody wants to stigmatize you for it, yeah, they're not your friends. No, no. And and the worst part about that first first phone call was leaving a message. I hate leaving messages. No, I I actually got through to somebody right away. But. Anyway, so long story short, I've been going to therapy since uh, March, and I used to think in my head, man, if somebody's going to therapy. They've got issues. Like nobody goes nobody just goes to a therapist to go to a therapist. Right. But since then, uh, because it's been incredibly helpful just, just for once a week to have that outlet. Yeah. To be able to get everything out has been amazing. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, Whoa, this this person probably needs to go to therapy. Not like self diagnosing people or anything like that, but Well, it's like you could see people. You're like, you would really, really benefit from going to therapy. You know what? Once a week. Yeah, and you know what the funny thing is is like you don't even have to have problems to benefit from <laughs> no, therapy. You, don't. No, you, you don't. know, I mean, it would be good just to have somebody as a sounding board. Like I said, you know, that third person that's, you know, third generation really doesn't give a fuck about your life. But I mean, they do, but right. they don't. You know, they you don't can tell them anything. They yeah. don't care. But you know, it's really good to to have that to somebody to talk to. You know, somebody who doesn't know who you are, somebody who's not, you know, someone who you don't feel like you have to bring your own baggage to it. Like you do, you bring your baggage, but it's not like you have to bring that perception of your, it's, you're not trying to, it's, it's somebody that you don't have to bring your perceived persona to the board. You know, you You can be you and you don't have to worry about burdening that person. Right. Because that person probably also goes to therapy. Well, I would say, Ruben, I, I think that's awesome that you were, a, that you would just share that. Yeah, I you think know, there's a lot of people, including myself, that you know benefit from hearing that and can identify with that. And um, it's good just to say it, just 
just so that people know it's listen, okay. You're not by yourself. You're not right. on your own. Yeah. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, you know, do it. We, you know, you can send me a message on the Facebook page. Yep. You can email us at popgoulash42 at gmail.com. Got it down. Yeah. You know, just, you know, if you want to reach out to me, if you reach out to me, I'll talk to you about it. I'm, I'm, as you all know, I'm fairly open about everything <laughs> in my life. So, you know, never, never hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be more than glad to talk to you guys about it. Or, you know, I'll, I, I'm I'm not a licensed therapist, nor do I ever claim to be. But if you need somebody to talk to, you know, just to talk you off a ledge for a minute, just please let me know. I'll, I'll be I'll be more than glad to to uh, to abide and you know That's just be stuff. that person, man, for sure. Thank you. Word. That's good stuff. All right, man. let's talk about fun stuff. Now. Yeah, I want to tell people what we're drinking uh, because Word. it's pretty good, dude. That shit is delicious. Citradelic by New Belgium, mm-hmm. Tangerine IPA, mm-hmm. and it's not as happy as I thought it would be. It's actually really smooth. Yeah, and it's, it's got a nice balanced citrus taste to it. Word, yeah. I had a uh, a Sun Crusher from uh, Rev good. Brew here in Chicago. Um, again, a nice uh, a wheat beer. Not a real big fan of wheat beer, but that one's a really good one. Um, sometimes wheat beers are pretty heavy. Yeah, and sometimes. Like, if you got to throw an orange in it, because <laughs> Blue Moon's a wheat beer, right? you know, and... Or uh, a lemon. Or a lemon. Like, they, like, New Belgium makes a citradelic, but it's got a, it's a lime citradelic. It's not as good as the, the tangerine. I wouldn't think so. No. You'd probably have that little bitter taste of lime. Well, I like... But the th- then again, lime is my favorite citrus. Yeah. It, the, 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 like... I think you're part Mexican. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. I did grow up in Aurora, so... And I can make that stereotype because I'm Greek sicken, damn it. Right. <laughs> you would be more than welcome at our parties. Word. <laughs> no, like Lyme Your is kind my, would be accepted. My kind? <laughs> what do you mean I'm not kind? <laughs> Just not your kind. So, but yeah, no, I, it's good. And then uh, we we had a little bit of uh, uh, bullet rye bourbon, which is yes. delicious. Definitely need some ice next time around, though. And I need to really get rid of these booze bottles down here in the in the cave. Um, I feel like it's my college dorm all over again. Do you? I got that one there. I got the maker's bottle up there. I got an empty bottle of wine down here on the floor. Are they nostalgic for you? Or you just haven't thrown them away yet. I, I think it. I you laid... can start putting change in them, like other people do. No, or that, or fill them up with water and put a highlighter in them, <laughs> and then hope to God somebody brings me a black light at some point. Right. We used to do that in college a lot, too. I've never done that. Really? Yeah, it's like making a little uh, uh, light thing. <laughs> this is what happens when you... Is this like a poor man's lava lamp? Yeah, kind of-ish. This is what happens when you mess, mix an SSRI with a beer and a shot of whiskey. <laughs> My brain just spills out onto the floor. So, it's been a while since we've seen each other. It's been a while. Uh, I was on Facebook the other day, and I wanted to get your feedback on something. My feedback, or yeah, just your in... opinion? Your opinion. Well, I've got plenty of those. So I have a friend of mine. I'm not gonna not gonna say who she is because that's not important. Uh, but she is a very avid uh, social justice warrior. SJW in the purest sense of the word. Like it's uh, she. I think she believes in, in what she's fighting for. Okay. And, uh, Can't be mad at somebody about that. Right. And I don't know how much of that uh, goes out beyond just Facebook. Mm-hmm. But uh, she has this thing that she posted called Adventures in My Fuck Trump Shirt. So she has a, a shirt that says hashtag fuck Trump. Okay. Right. So she is down south, uh, Georgia. Or no, sorry. Carolina. South Carolina. Here's how the story goes. Okay. okay. So she's in a grocery store buying her kids an after school snack. Old man approaches her and says, Hillary would have sold us to the United Nations. She says, I didn't vote for Hillary. He says, you Dems want to ruin our country. She says, I'm not a Democrat. He says, you must be a Yankee wearing some shit like that in public. (laughs) She says, correction, I'm a damn Yankee. (laughs) <laughs> he says, y'all want to come down here and bring your drugs and guns. And she said, sir, the flow of drugs goes up, not down. And the South is in the middle of an epidemic. Also, I hate guns. 
And he says, keep going and we will have a civil war, bitch. And she said, well, actually, we already did and we won. <laughs> I mean, if you want a round two, okay. He then proceeded to threaten my life and insinuate him and his friends being violent towards me. Called me every name in the book. I kept a smile on my face. The best part was the other man who was witnessing it all apologized for the first man and said, we are different, ma'am. Don't pay him no mind. So I decided to comment on it. Sure. I want you to give me your feedback on the story, but also my comment here. Sure. So what I said was a shirt like that doesn't exactly attract intelligent discourse to begin with. That's very true. And she responded, she responded with, and yet I should be able to wear it without having my life threatened. She so is what do you also, think about that? Well, not to get political, but no, no, no. it was I interesting. Mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hold on one second here. Oh, God damn it. Am I too loud? No, 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 no. The, the okay. screensaver came up on the laptop, and that <laughs> always makes me weirded out. Um, the, both, both points are valid. Right. You know, but... It's it's kind of like what that, does that invite though? Right, right, and that's that's where I was going with it. Like, it's the whole like free speech thing. Right. Okay. You can't yell fire in a lo- in a loaded movie theater, you know, because people can get hurt. <laughs> right. You know, like yes, you do, and I I'm I've always said this about if, you know any time like well it's a freedom of speech. Okay. I don't know why I had to say it in the southern kind of accent. <laughs> um. But it, it, yes. You do have the freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want without worrying about the government coming to your home and arresting you the for government. what you have to say. Keyword. But that does not absolve you from anything that someone around you might think about what you're saying. Right. Okay. That doesn't absolve you from an employer firing you for saying, oh, I'm going to Africa. I hope I don't get AIDS. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. I'm white. Which somebody got arrested or got fired for tweeting that you oh, know my god that was big news a few years back so like it's like you're not gonna go to a heavily black community and be a white guy and just go out there and start screaming the n-word you're gonna get your ass kicked pretty quickly pretty quickly you know you don't go to pilsen and start you know, hauling out talking like about racial send you back. Yeah, uh, slurs right. about Mexican Americans building the wall. Yeah, you, you look. You do have the right to to do whatever you want to do under the guise of free speech, but that doesn't absolve you of any um, what's the word I'm looking for? Any reaction or you know every like every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's a good statement. You know, yeah. so the consequence of what you say, you know, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but that doesn't absolve you of any consequence that may come right. from that. So, like, yes, she absolutely has the right to have a shirt that says fuck Trump on it. In South Carolina. In South Carolina or Where's Chicago. It? Probably or, a lot of Trump supporters. Absolutely. Or Alabama or Alaska or, you know, wherever. But that's not, you know, whomever is going to be that supporter of said 45, like, they might take offense to that and start talking shit. It's just as if you were to come into Chicago with a fuck Obama Mm t-shirt. It would have gotten the exact same reaction from the opposite end of the aisle. Right. You know? So it's like, pick and choose your battles, man. Like, look, we all know that, like, we know how we feel about politicians and i'm not saying that protest is not a good thing or should be taken off the table it's that's not what i'm saying at all tact is a more explosive weapon than shock and awe for me at least that's what i believe like if you can do something intelligently without being like fuck you like that's like if i could if i could point Six points out that says, this is why I feel this way about this particular issue, topic, person, whomever. That makes more sense to me as long as you, because it it would open a dialogue. You have a conversation about it. But if you're just like, fuck you, well, where's the, where's, where, who's going to learn anything from that? All it makes you look like is an asshole, you know? And that's the big difference between 
Lord Baelish and the Hound. Right. There's right. always some Lannister cunt. <laughs> but, like, you know, I... I, I don't know. I, I The way I was looking at it... Was I that. agree with her shirt, but I also, like, hey, that guy has as much of a right to say anything he wants to you. Right. Because you basically insulted him for his Where political beliefs. You know, but if you're wearing a rebel flag, you deserve to get your fucking shit punched too. You know, now threatening somebody's life, that's an extreme. That is, the, and that should not happen. That should never happen. But I'm not surprised that it did. No, I'm not surprised that it did either. So I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, okay, if you saw this shirt on an ad on Facebook and you thought, oh, this is a funny shirt, all right, we're going to do something. I'm, I'm, I'm down in South Carolina. Fuck everybody. I'm going to wear it. It's going to be great. We're going to see what kind of reactions we get. Mm hmm. Don't be surprised when shit like that happens. Right. I mean, especially after the events of what happened in Charlottesville. Like, come on, man. It's going to happen. Yeah. Like, like, use some common sense. Especially if she was at the grocery store or wherever she was by herself. Well, no, it was, she has little ones as well. That's even worse. <laughs> like, dude, I would never wear a shirt that says fuck in front of my kids. No. Like, I don't mind them, like, hearing swear words. There was a point words. where I thought that was funny and cool because it had shock value. Oh, yeah. But as you get older and a little bit more sagely, you realize that shock value is just that. Like, right. for me, like, it's like standing out. It's like driving by and seeing somebody with an abortion sign. Exactly. And I hate those fucking signs. And you see somebody with, like, a picture of an aborted fetus. Right. Like, okay, I don't need to see that. That triggers me. That makes me want to punch someone. Yeah. Because that does nothing except for want to shock people. Yeah. And it's like, you're not going to change somebody's opinion by shocking them. Right. I was walking down in downtown Naperville on a Saturday night, walking past this corner. It's a big, busy corner. A guy was holding a fetus sign. Another guy was preaching at these three teenage girls that were sitting on a bench. And there was a part of me that was like, these fucking assholes. Like, mm -hmm. I need to say something. Then right. I realized they're just going to argue with me to their blue in the face. Right. And so it's not going to do any good at it's all. It's not opening a discourse. It's it's absolutely just like, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm right. not going to listen to how you feel. I want to try and prove you wrong. I'm going to prove you wrong. And all we're going to do is argue. And so it goes every argument on Facebook. Yeah. Ever. Absolutely. Like it's to the point right now where like I find I literally find myself typing out a response to something, <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, it's not worth it, right? You know. Well, I had a friend of mine that said, and it makes sense. <clears throat> people change through trauma most of the time, right? Whether it's spiritual or political, economic, whatever. And if you think that you're going to change someone's entire viewpoint on Facebook through a conversation, it ain't happening. Forget it. Yeah, because for one, like it's 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 anonymous stones. It's like it's like firing a bomb at somebody from a drone. Right. You know, you don't see the look in their eyes when they're reading it, and all it does is send both people into a blind rage. Yeah. Now sit down and have dinner with that person, and try and learn. Right, but That's this different, the, I think. Very much so. But the sad part about it is, chances are. Those two people would never sit down to eat together because no. they're too diametrically opposed and they're too caught in their own echo chambers. Have you seen the? There's a video of Charles Barkley and one other basketball player sitting down in a room with the leader of the alt right movement. Yes, I've seen that. It's <laughs> nuts. It's nuts. He's like, "Look, we're not racist, but we just believe the black and white shouldn't be living right. together." <laughs> You're like. And Barkley's just looks definition? at him. Yeah, and Barkley's looking at him like, "What the fuck did this cracker just say?" <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a bigger blacker dude, like to have in a room with him. Dude, yeah, seriously, it's, it's at least somebody that's that outspoken, right? Like Barkley was one of those that like never he didn't pull any punches when he talked. No, he didn't. But he was also he also had tact. He was educated for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you could see at a certain point in that video, he was just like, "This motherfucker's crazy, <laughs> right?" <laughs> he actually oh. believes this shit, right? Yeah, wow, it's nuts, dude. But, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. For so my my thought on the matter is like, you had a valid point. 
she also had a valid point. Right. You know, but at the same time, you got to pick and choose your battles and where you're at. Like, I guess the bigger question is, what is your goal? Yeah. What are you trying to prove? If you're just trying to wear that shirt because, one, you know the people that agree with you be like, yeah, right on, nice shirt. And the people that you know that are going to be like disagreeing with you are going to be like, fuck you too. You know, like, <laughs> what are you doing? Mission accomplished. Yeah. Like, right. like what is the, like, exactly, what is your point with a shirt like that? Right. You know, like, oh, that's like bumper sticker theology. Oh, my God. That is a great topic. Like, it's like bumper sticker anything. Like, I hate bumper stickers. Unless you're advertising a band, dude, you're not clever with a bumper sticker. There's very, There have been very few times I've ever looked at a bumper sticker and I've been like, oh, that's clever. You know? Well, and it's mainly been the funny ones. If they've been funny at all. Like it, right. it takes a lot to 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 make me chuckle on a bumper sticker. It really does. So just a few examples because I'm pulling these up. Uh, honk if you love Jesus. Text oh, yeah. if you want to see him. Yeah, uh, Jesus is my co-pilot. Yeah, elect Jesus, your life leader. Oh yeah, popular around like election time. Mm-hmm. Jer- oh, I like these. The Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Just a scripture reference. You're like uh, okay. My boss is a Jewish carpenter. Yeah. Oh, God, I love that one. <laughs> uh, let's do one more here. Uh, be profound, not profaned. Fuck you. <laughs> and uh, the uh, I like the coexist one. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Are you following Jesus this close? Yeah. Or, or uh, if you're... What is it? Uh, my brakes work really well. Come a little closer and I'll show you. Christian lives matter. Oh, good Lord, shut up. Give me a fucking break. Honk if you love Jesus. Whatever. Anyway. I wonder how many honks that they get. I mean, I wonder if, like, that person is sitting at a stoplight, and he's looking at his phone, like, texting some bullshit, and the light turns green, and somebody's honking behind him. I was like, wow, that guy really loves Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) You know what, though? I'm an equal opportunity hater. Oh, yeah. The people that have the Calvin and Hobbes stickers peeing on a Chevy symbol... Dude, I don't get that. Or like whatever Cal- it is. Like, obviously, those people have never read Calvin and Hobbes because right. Calvin never pissed on anything. <laughs> or or Calvin and Hobbes kneeling and praying on a cross. If you're going to do a bumper sticker, have it be witty or, or something. original or funny or so- something to entertain me for that second that I'm behind you at a stoplight. Or you know what? Just, you know what I like? And, and, and it, political bumper stickers. Like, I'd pass by somebody with, like, a Bush Dole or whatever oh, bumper yeah. sticker. Like, you really, really have to have a sense of commitment to, like, have, a like, a, a candidate's bumper sticker on your car. Who was it running with Bush? A Dick Cheney? Yeah. They had some bumper stickers that were, like, don't be a dick, don't vote don't vote Bush or something like right. that. I don't know. But like to to have like a, a candidate's sticker on your car. It's pretty like dedicated. Eight years after that candidate is lost. <laughs> it's like, dude, come on. I gotta say though, I, I like I smile every time I see a, an Obama uh one from his first election. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Whatever. Mainly because it was so Oh, it was a historic event historical, for sure. Yeah. But at the same time I'm like, all right, he's not president anymore. <laughs> you know, you can take that off now. Yeah, or you can take the vote Obama out of your front lawn now. Yeah, seriously, like it's uh, putting a bumper sticker on your car is not going to make me think any way or one way or the other. Uh, aside from the fact that you don't have enough thought in your head to actually come up with something, so you had to buy. It's like it's like your greeting card. Right. You know, like here's a card saying things that I couldn't think of things to say for myself. <laughs> you know. Oh, I fucking hate bumper stickers. Like, like I said, unless you're promoting like a band, like really, okay. Even I mean, but it would be a shitty car. Did you see anybody putting stickers on a Lexus? Or yes, a BMW. You do? Oh yeah, I've you know. Well, you you got to figure. I BMW, drive BMW, Mercedes. I've seen like, I I yeah, I, I've seen forty five pence stickers on those. Wow. Yeah, dude. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is, whatever. So bumper stickers Again, suck. Again, what's your goal? Right. What's the goal, you know? Right. Unless it's a, unless it's a Megadeth sticker, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you care if it's a Megadeth sticker? Well, yeah, right on, man. I'd drive up next to him and be like, rock! Or Red Hot Chili Peppers? Eh, well, it depends on what era. You know what I see a lot of are two things. Uh, the Chive. 
keep calm, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see those uh, marathon stickers. Oh, yeah, the 26.2. Right. All right. You're still driving, asshole. (laughs) You want to impress me? Run down Randall Road. I saw one the other day. It was 0.0. 0.0. Those are funny. Underneath it says, I don't run. Right. (laughs) Those are pretty good. Or the or the country stickers, IRL. IRL. Oh yeah, or the IRL, but they put the the line on it, so it's IRE for for Jamaica. What? Yeah, because it's IRE. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, well, I used to put those country stickers on my guitar. I think I might still. I don't know. I think it all goes back to people just wanting to belong and have identity to something. Right. That you know? totally makes sense. But you know, some of them are just so stupid. This is my team. Uh, right. To to that to that point though, I did I did wear those bad Christian T shirts in the nineties and the two thousands that oh, were just knockoff of like major brands. Right. Instead of Coca Cola, it would say Jesus Christ. Right. You know. They're like they're like the knockoff T shirts you get at a fish concert. Right. Where like like they'll take like like a logo, but they'll incorporate like a fish song title onto it. You know. Right. Speaking of which. Yes. Dude, what did you think? Okay, so I have it uh, in, in case for you guys listening. Ruben gave me a live New Year's Eve double disc fish CD. Yes. To listen to. Um, and I was, uh, I didn't know what to think at first, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I was pretty open to it. You played me a little bit on a previous podcast. Yeah. Um, but I have it in the car and I listen to it, not all the time. Usually if I'm driving longer than five minutes. Oh, yeah, you almost have to. Uh, but I have to say, like, I didn't think I would like it. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Dude, they're fucking incredible. It's it's one of those CDs where you can just put it on and drive. You don't necessarily have to pay attention to what's being said. Yeah. But the music is at such a good caliber that you can enjoy it. Right. So, yeah, they're fucking excellent, dude. They're. I never thought I would say I'd, I'd like a jam band, but I think I do. Yeah, I mean, like, well, for them, it's it's just that they cross so many genres. They're like the Beastie Boys to me, you know, because they do rock, they do jazz, they do country, they do funk, you know, they do a little bit and of you everything. Be talented as hell to not only number one do that, but do it well, right? Or to be able to weave songs together, like in different styles. You mean? Well, it, for example, por ejemplo, <laughs> the first time I ever saw Fish when Fish perform, for the most part. Did you just speak Spanish? See, sí. <laughs> <laughs> but the first time I ever saw Fish, um, it was incredible. Like they they always perform in two sets. They'll do a first set, take a break, come out to a second set. Right. They never have an opening band. It's just Fish. Just a four hour show. Yeah, hey, hour, hour eight, three usually. Like the first set's usually an hour and a half. Second set's usually an hour and a half. Um, but the second set, they would do one of their songs. And then they would be in the middle of a jam, and then all of a sudden they started playing Moby Dick by Led Zeppelin. And then they went... It would just sort of sneak up on you? It would sneak up on you. And then they would go into another one of their songs, and then they would do Moby Dick again. Wow. And then they would jam into another one of their other songs, and then it would weave into Moby Dick again. So, like, the entire set was tied together with Moby Dick. Like, who does that? Like, <laughs> Like... Like, you would never go to see Green Day and see him play, like, the whole second half of the show as one large jam of 17 different songs. Right. Now, the only thing... They're weaving in and out with the same song. Right. Now, the only thing that I could compare... Like, Green Day sort of did that a bit on American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown, where they had, like, an 11-minute song, which was, like, a medley of other songs. But, like... Just the fact that, like, there's always that, where where are they going with this moment at a fish show? Like, what are they doing? Like, they got this jam going, and it's really grooving really well, and you're like... And they know. They know what they're going to do. Yeah. But sometimes I I wonder if they even know what they're going to do. Like, I've read articles where they're like, yeah, we kind of come together with a set list, but then a lot of times, you know, we'll throw it out at the last minute, and we'll just see where it takes us. And, like, he'll start, like, Trey will start to play like some weird chord progression or, or scale that would trigger the other guys to think, all right, we're going to go from the song to the song. 
So, like they'll play it in the same key. Like that's the result of playing together for so for long, twenty odd years or right. over thirty you years. Just sort of feel the other person, right? Yeah, and, and it just a band of that caliber. They're just they're just incredible, dude. And if they come around next summer, dude, you and I are going to see them. I want you. I want you. I was watching this uh, guy being interviewed on a talk show. I think it was like Conan or um, Jimmy Fallon. I don't know who it was. Famous person that went to a fish show. Mm-hmm. And it was a ridiculous thing where they played 13 days in a row. Yeah, yeah, at, uh, at Madison Square Garden. They played over 300 songs Yeah, and didn't repeat one song the entire time. Yeah. And he was saying there were people that went every day yeah. to every show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my, insane. My buddy Tim and my buddy uh, Brian went to two or three of the shows, and it was a different show every time. Different show, and dude, that's how they do their shows. Like you can see Fish three nights in a row and not get the same show three times in a row. But they did the Baker's Dozen at Madison Square Garden and did not repeat a song once. <laughs> and that's why you have fish heads. That's why you have fish heads because every show is different, and even jams within shows. Like you could hear, let's say, like a song like Yamar. Okay, which, which is I don't know that one offhand. N- no, 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 you one. wouldn't probably, but because uh, they have like all the songs that are on their studio recorded albums, but they've got like eight albums worth of material that has never been put to tape. That they just know that they just play. They've written these songs and they'll just go out and play them, and they're just like Sleeping Monkey. They've got a song called Sleeping Monkey. It's never been recorded in a studio, but they play it live. They've got a song called Big Black Furry Creature from Mars, which is kind of like a punk <laughs> song. Never been recorded, but when they play it, people go fucking nuts. Because, because they, you can only hear it live. You can only hear some of their songs live, which is rad. Like, you, you'll you find them on, like, live CD releases like that, but they've never really recorded them in a studio setting. Right. So, like, it's very possible that, you know, you could you could go to a show and have them do songs that have like an entire show of songs that were never recorded on album but are all part of the fish pantheon it's it's pretty sweet man it's pretty cool that they can do that as carlos types into his phone anyway i am yeah because i'm preparing for your question which question you know what it's been a long time it's been a while what am i dude did you uh did you read the uh the batman comic that i lent you you're like, you lent me a Batman comic? No, I have not yet. Okay. I did, however... No, I, okay, I read a portion of it Okay. with my son. I sat down oh, and rad. read it with him. That's awesome. Yeah, because I wanted him to see... Because he loves doing art. Yeah. So I wanted him to see the different art that, that they were doing, how it was a little darker. Mm-hmm. Because he actually... Um, I had to buy him a blank comic book. They sell these where they've got different shapes on every page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, for him to do his storylines, because... He'll do it on like lined paper, mm-hmm. and it just doesn't. It would look much better in a comic book. Anyway, I wanted to give him an example of, hey, this is how they draw it. Yeah, this is if you're reading a conversation, it goes from left to right to left to right, yep. up and down, and uh, uh, it was really cool. So I haven't read all of it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, and Greg. But I Cap- did read it with him. Greg Capullo is an amazing artist, and he's the guy that did all the art in that Batman book. And he's fantastic, dude. It is, and it's, um, is it color? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Even if it were black, I remember some col- comic books just being black and white. Some of them are. Right. Yeah, they're like. Just, the way that they're drawn, though, you yeah. still have depth and perspective. and. Oh, absolutely. There's a, uh, I've got a book called Batman Noir, and it they actually, what they did was they took a, an existing Batman story called uh, The Black Mirror. It was like a four or five issue thing. And they actually stripped all the color and just made it black and white. And it's it's more... I think it's almost as impressive as the color version. Wow. Um, there's an artist named Sean Gordon Murphy who did a book called Punk Rock Jesus. <laughs> and, That's awesome. Dude, it's it's an incredible book. Is it a whole, is just one book or a series? It's a series, but it's only like six issues, but you can get it as a trade paperback, like collected. Right. And it's all in black and white, and that guy's artwork is amazing. He's actually writing a Batman story called... I can't remember what it's called, but uh, uh, he is doing a Batman book starting in October, and it's all... How do you I, keep up with all this? It's just... Following them on Twitter, yeah, or? I follow them on Twitter, and I'm just a comic book guy. Right. So, like, I comes up in your newsfeed. Keeps comes up in my newsfeed. I get emails about it. 
So this is this is it's the shit that I'm passionate about. So, so that being said, go ahead, Los. Yes, yes. What have you been consuming? A lot. It's been God, almost uh, a been month. a while. Yeah, three weeks, four weeks. Easily. I don't know how I started talking like this. <laughs> it must be the beer. No, uh, so I started watching season three of Narcos. I've never watched Narcos. You got to watch it. I've heard it's good. My father-in-law has watched Narcos. <laughs> and he, Wait, really? Yeah, dude. For some reason, I can't picture him watching Narcos. Dude, he watched the first two seasons. He really liked it. The season three picks up basically where Pablo Escobar died. Right. I hear he's not in the, not in the series at all. No. And it's, it's just as compelling as when it was. It's insane. I had my doubts because I was like, the first two seasons, they're really centered around him. Mm-hmm. And he drives the entire first two seasons. Well, that's that. That is the testament to good writing, right? And now, third season, it's the sort of follow up with the other kingpins and the families. Mm-hmm. It's just as good. Nice. I'm only about three or four episodes in, so I've been watching that. Um, I did watch the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather fight, mm-hmm. which uh, which was good. I thought. Uh, I was hoping <laughs> this. I always like to try and analyze people's reactions, but I was hoping Conor McGregor would win. Right, right. Just because I Floyd May- Mayweather's um, is just an asshole. You know what though? He's Say what you off. will. Yeah, he got three hundred million dollars for that fight. Insane. Donated two hundred million dollars to the victims of the Houston. No, he didn't. Yes, did he, he did. Really? Yeah, he donated two hundred million dollars to the Houston thing. Uh, he's a good guy then. I didn't know that. Yeah. His all right. I would say his persona. His persona is a douchebag. What we see in the media. And he's a friend of Justin Bieber, so he can't yeah. really be that cool. And Conor McGregor too. He's he's all talk. But yeah, but he he can kick some ass. You had it. somebody that had thirty years of experience versus somebody that's stepping into the ring for the first time. As a boxer. Yeah, as a boxer. So I would say that he did pretty well. He went ten rounds. Right. With the best boxer in the world. 50 um, though and he even walked away with 100 million right i would lose for 100 million yeah seriously i would go like in the ring with mike tyson in his prime for 100 million dollars so what i think they should do is to have a follow-up fight where mayweather goes into mma, MMA. dude mcgregor will fuck him up <laughs> there's <laughs> no you. doubt mcgregor but would you know fuck how much him money up. they'll make off that fight <sighs> dude dude dana white needs to be drawing up those contracts right God, they now would it would it would probably bring in more money than the boxing. Well, yeah, because MMA is way more popular than boxing is right now. So I've been I saw that uh, been hanging out. Uh, went to Wisconsin for three four days, mm-hmm. right around the same time you were up there. Yep, spent some time in Lake Geneva, did the water park, safari tour, all that good stuff, and uh, just started week one of fantasy football. So nice. That's what I've been consuming, dude. Have you yeah. watched the last of? thrones yes dude dude all right let me just say something all right here here's the thing I've heard this it's been what three weeks two weeks since i don't care if we talk about it fuck but you what i'm saying is this people that said that they were let down by the the season finale are idiots that's ridiculous they're idiots there was it was so, so good it was so good dude when when aria fucking slit little finger's throat yes dude you think she's gonna keep his face I think so, because that's the theory that's going around, because she didn't cut his face at all. Right. But when it turned, which, what do you have to say? What do you have to say for yourself, Lord Baelish? Dude, yeah. And you were like, oh, oh shit. shit. It's going down, right. finally. Yeah. And he cried like a little bitch. Yeah, he did. Like a little bitch. Dude, that was excellent. Um, dude, the fire-breathing ice dragon. Dude. Dude, them being trapped on an island with surrounded by whites? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that whole series, the whole season has been great. Great. Daenerys and... Uh, John hooking up. John hooking up. Yeah. Learning who, who John's real name is. Yep. Aeon or Aaron. Aegon. 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 Yep. Yeah, dude. Like, it's... Dude. Cersei or, or what? No, Jamie. Jamie leaving, leaving Cersei. Cersei. Now, I, I've been listening to this other uh, Game of Thrones podcast. Um, let me give a proper shout out to this podcast. Tyrion finding out that Cersei's pregnant. Right. That was kind of gross. It's the. Um, 
Well, it's just called Game of... It's the Coffee Clatch Crew. Coffee Clatch Crew. Is that spelled with all C's or all K's? No. Uh, coffee with a C, Clatch with a K, Crew with a C. But it's called the game. It's just called Game of Thrones. If you just search it out in uh, iTunes, you'll find it. And they were they kind of brought up the idea of like, would Cersei really have given Jamie that much information about what she's going to do if she knew that he was going to just take off like he did? She's a wild card. Like she already did the misdirection about have, giving about Euron taking off. Like, really, is she going to give Jamie the, all that information? But. At the very last scene, right before like the snow started to fall in King's Landing, if you notice, Jamie was not wearing Lannister armor when he was on the horse leaving King's Didn't Landing. Know that. Yeah. He was just kind of wearing like whatever the under armor would have been. So he's going to fight the main fight between good and evil. Right. And that's that's one of the things that they brought up is like those who are more concerned with fighting the game of the thrones right. are gonna get taken out. And because it's the bigger picture, you know, what's your end game here? That's why John and John Snow and uh, 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 Daenerys are going to like probably win out in the end because they're fighting for team people. And who finally stepped up and got some balls and fought to go save his sister. Oh, yeah, dude. And people f- bitched about that whole scene. That was stu- why? Dude, like, I, I think it was just, I think what had happened was at the very end, like, Theon getting kicked in the nuts like six times and it didn't do anything. Like, people was like, oh, whatever. But, like, that was <laughs> the thing that turned the tide. He was like, ha, ha, fuck you, I got you now. Right. You know? I thought it was awesome. He beat that dude's ass and he's like, let's do this for my sister. Let's and go. And they all got behind him. Yeah. So, oh, I can't wait, dude. Dude, but I hope two that. years. That's the part that kills me. Yeah. But then again, apparently there's a show called Westworld. That I've seen all of that uh, first season. Was it good? Amazing. I've seen a couple episodes of it, but it didn't really grab. You got to watch it through. Um, it's once you get to the final episode of mm-hmm. season one, everything makes sense. Really? Okay. Yeah. They tie it all back together. Gotcha. But my plan, what I was thinking about, was doing like a Game of Thrones viewing party for the next two years, where we watch start from the, the very be- beginning, start to finish. One episode a week. That'd be rad. You know? That'd be rad. Don't be getting tired on me. Oh, dude. Side effect of the medication, man. And uh, uh, the wildling, uh, not Joros. Uh, what's his name? The redhead guy? Yes. Yeah. He Did he die? Did he not no die? No knows. No. Um, knows. The, the podcast, that, I, that Game of Thrones podcast I was listening to, they were like, well, you know, we've rewatched it several times, and it really, really looks like... He was. They ran the opposite direction of the wall coming down, so they may have made it. They you know, it's shit's going down when a wildland says run. Yeah, right. Because they were at the front lines of ready to defend all this. Right. So yeah, but it's uh, and then like, like he had uh, uh, Tyrion like creepily staring at the door while <laughs> John and and <laughs> Danny were getting it on. Yeah. Like uh. Like, what was that all about? So like, what do you think about this? So, uh, the youngest... Um, Bron? Bron. No, no, no. Bran. Bran. The Three-Eyed Raven. They're saying that he's the Night King. I don't buy it. Because when the, when the army is marching through the wall, mm-hmm. they form a wolf's head. I, yeah, I've heard... I, I saw that. And then, like, apparently the brooch that they're using to keep the capes on, the Night King has the same one that Bran has. Right. And there was one other thing that they were like, well, it could be... I don't I don't know if I buy it. Like, they were like, well, he could have warged back in time and got caught in the body of the guy who got turned into the Night and King. And that's why he let Jon Snow live that one time. Right. But I don't know if I buy that. By the way, i got to show you my picture on Facebook. I've seen it. Me as the Night King? As the Night King, yeah. But it's kind of got a smile like John C. Riley. That's hilarious, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I don't buy, I don't buy it as him as the king of the night king or him as the night king. Same thing with like Jon Snow when he got when the like what was it season four I think or five where the Night's Watch just like stabbed the fuck out of him and killed him. Yeah, and then that kid came in very last and stabbed him. Yeah, and then they were like, well, if you look at the blood splatter on the ground, it looks like a dragon. <laughs> Like it looks like a blood splatter on the ground. I think you're draw reaching for shit. But that's overanalyzing something to to make your point valid. But in in all fairness, like nothing is done unintentionally in that show. 
So it's very, very possible that that could be. But Does it follow a storyline with books? I, I don't know. I've not read the books. Hmm. But from what I hear, like the last two seasons were, they were on their own. Because they ran out of time. They, they ran out of source material. Because apparently um, uh, George R.R. R. Martin has two more books to write. Or one more, I'm not sure. He's got a. He, there are books left to be written, and apparently, like, they're speculated that he's holding out for more money before he releases the last book. That's smart. Yeah. So he gave he gave like the producers of the show bullet points of what's going to happen, what could happen, or what's happening. Right, but it's up to them to fill in all the in, intermediate details, <laughs> which is kind of cool because well, then two years to do it. Right. Well, I mean, it's cool because then it gives the people who read the book, like a little bit of a different flavor of what Martin's going to do. Have you heard the theory that uh, Varys is a merman? No. Yeah. There's there's actual fan theory going around that really? he is uh, a legit merman. Hmm. Well, there's also a fan theory, too, that he's kind of the one that set everything into motion, too. Really? Yeah. Apparently, like, if you watch the first two or three episodes, right. like, watching Lord Varys do what he does, he kind of sets true. everything into motion. He's almost like Baelish. Yeah. Yeah, he's just as creepy as Lord Baelish was. Without a wiener. Right. Wienerless <laughs> piece of shit. Anyway, two years, we got to wait. And But from what I was saying about West, or Westworld, Westeros, um, they said that Westworld wasn't coming back for two years, and they're coming back this fall, from what I've heard. So, yeah, HBO might be like, oh, I don't know, they're going to take two years to get the, sec- the last season out. They might not. So, who is your favorite character? If you had to pick one. Dude, I like Tyrion. Yeah. Tyrion's a badass. I drink and I know things. Come on. <laughs> the guy's a badass. Like, I really like Tyrion's character. I like um, the actor that plays him. Yeah. Oh, God, what's his name? I don't know his name. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage, yes. Dude, I, I everything that I've seen him in, I've loved him in it. Yeah. Like, so... He's one of my favorite characters. I mean, yeah, it's easy to say, oh, Jon Snow or Daenerys, but, like, Khal Drogo... Was fucking badass. Yeah, he was. Um, you know, I even liked. Uh, oh, what's his name? What guy? Oh, think. Reuben. Think, think, think. Just say it. Ready? Three, two, one. Loris? Oh. No. Lordis. Darvos? No. The guy who had uh, the that was going to turn into a stone man, but oh, Sir Jora. Jora, dude, yeah. I, I dig Jora. Like he, I, he's, I, he's loyal, dude. Dude, to a fault, and even uh, even uh, Sam. Like I like Sam's character as well. Samwell. Samwell. I always want to call him Samwise from you know, Lord of the Rings. I love the Hound and I love Tyrion. Yeah, dude, the Hound had some of the best lines in the he last did. last episode. So some there, was, there was some season where he was like, now go and get me a fucking chicken before I kill everyone, everyone, the last one of you in here. Yeah. That's when he was running around with Arya. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always some Lannister cunt She's fucking She's a badass too, by the way. Dude, Arya? Yeah, for sure. I still don't particularly care for Sansa. I think I still think she was kind of a whiny little bitch, but... Um, well, it's going to be interesting to see how they, they tie all this together. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know the last season, like this season was only seven episodes. Yeah, that was kind of shitty, don't you think? Yeah, but the next season, six. What? They're only giving us six episodes for the and final that's season. It. That's it. they got to be ex- like extended episodes, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, from what I hear, they're going to be all two-hour episodes or hour and a okay. half to two-hour episodes. I can deal with that. But they're also going to do a spinoff series as well. So, so. Daenerys, hot... Yeah, duh. Yeah. Dude, she was hot when she played uh, Sarah Connor. On uh, Terminator? In the Terminator. The last one, Terminator Genesis. Didn't know that was her. Yeah, she played Sarah Connor. Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. That's her name, yeah. Uh, interesting point. In the uh, TV show, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, right. Cersei Lannister played Sarah Connor. Really? Yeah. I saw a meme with uh, Cersei Lannister and her haircut. Mm-hmm. It said uh, Cersei's haircut is like every soccer mom ever that didn't get seated right away at Olive Garden. 
<laughs> like her new haircut. <laughs> right, exactly. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, Lena Headley. That's Cersei? Yeah. She was Sarah Connor in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. It ran two seasons on Fox. Crazy. It was on. Uh, it was on Netflix. It was actually really good. It was a really good series, and it only wow. went two seri- two two uh, seasons. She also was Queen Goro on um, in Three Hundred. She was King Leonidas's wife in Three Hundred. In the movie. In the movie Three Hundred, yeah. How do you like? Did you just connect all this shit in your head? Dude, I've got like this vast, like, I'm going to forget birthdays of my children. Like all the IMDb information is. Dude, seriously. It's chronologically ridiculous. stored in your yeah, brain. Yeah, for some odd reason. But yeah, no, she she played King, Queen Goro in, from 300. That was King Damn, Leonidas' I did, wife. I got to go back and look at Yeah, that. dude. Totally. But So, beyond that, my friend, I'll ask you same question what have you oh, these last, well, past three four weeks what you obviously doing? game of thrones for right. sure been watching the fuck out of game of thrones um been catching up on preacher as best i can i got still have to watch that's on hbo no it's on amc amc Is yeah that, that's on netflix then can you watch it on netflix i don't know if it's up on netflix yet but i think it's on demand okay i know um i got two the last two episodes that have been out are on my dvr now um American Horror Story started again, and I, I don't know. People shit on it. I, I think it might be interesting. It's too hard to tell from the first episode. Um, they're they're getting kind of political, but not. But it's weird. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Um, dude, I've been watching Shameless. What uh, what season are you in? I just finished the second season. Okay, that's where I'm at. Yeah. I literally this morning finished the second I'm in, season. I'm probably a few episodes into the third season. Okay, I haven't gotten that far yet, but um, I love it, dude. It's great. I wish that like I know Dana had been preaching it for weeks now. Right. I, I just wish that I would have jumped on it earlier, but I finally was like, all right, you know, Game of Thrones is over. What the fuck else am I going to watch? And seriously, I watched it in two seasons in a week. You know what's great about that show? Every character is good. Yeah. On that whole show, even the kids, man. Yeah, yeah, Carl and uh, 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 Debbie. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like I, it, it, like, and it's one of those where like you're laughing and then you're cringing yeah, and then you you're on the tears. Macy in that dude, show. he's brilliant. Like he reminds me so much of certain members of my family. <laughs> like it's it's sometimes it's almost hard to watch because right. i'm like oh yeah i know that guy i know that guy very well Isn't there an episode where he wakes up in canada yes have you seen that one yeah 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 that was in <laughs> that was in the first season i think yes because that's when uh uh steve slash jimmy yeah like drives him up to canada and leaves him in like toronto in like a, a random park in a park and he gets like <laughs> then didn't they have to like spring him they had to like Hide him in a shower of a U-Haul or something. They did, yeah, yeah. That dude was he a good show. Got arrested by two Mounties. Yeah, dude, the show's brilliant it's and an amazing. Show William H Macy is great in it, dude. Um, Do you find that you like what I liked most? This is probably bad, but the reason why I like the show so much is because I identified with it. Yeah, absolutely. Like Jesse, our uh, our Minnesota correspondent, who hasn't called in in weeks, fucker. Um, <laughs> he was like, yeah, it's too much dysfunction. I can't handle it. I'm like, I don't know. I, I grew up, I thrived in dysfunction. Yes. So it's like, like, and he was like, oh, well, I had dysfunction too. I'm like, yeah, I get it. But there was always some kind of hustle or scheme going dude, on. Dude, seriously. Like, oh, I, uh, I fell down and hurt my, my right. neck, my back. <laughs> I'm going to sue for $500,000, <laughs> but I'll settle for right now for two fifty and a book of stamps. Bag of chips. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a great show, dude. Like, yeah. Lip, I think, is my favorite character because he's just tortured. Like he's so smart, but yet, like he's in between two worlds. Yeah, like, yeah. and I, I, I relate to that character because I feel like I'm torn between two worlds sometimes. Between yeah. my, you know, my my past, my upbringing, and and where I am now. You know, it's it's totally, dude, totally. It's a good show. It's a fantastic show. So if you haven't watched it at all out there, Papa Land, uh, it's on Netflix right, right now. The first seven seasons are all up on Netflix. And I can't believe there's seven seasons. Right I know. Now. It's like, really? Where was I at? Well, I didn't. I, I never had Showtime, so I, right. You know, I was like, all right, whatever. And it was based off a British show, much like The Office was. Same name. Yeah. Yeah, and pretty pretty much the same. 
like premise and everything and even some of the episodes i've noticed are like you know this episode is based off a so-and-so episode from the original british bbc bbc show you know my favorite thing about that is when they catch you up in case you were passed out under a rock last week right here's what happened <laughs> like the one fiona's like in case you're too fucking lazy to watch what we did last week this is what's going on <laughs> so yeah so i've been watching shameless um Night Shift just ended, which is a good show on NBC if anybody's got a chance to watch it. Um, lots and lots and lots of Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. Dude, like Grayson is just addicted to Dude, some Paw better Patrol. better that there's never like Paw Patrol on ice or something uh, like that. Yeah, we'll take him. I don't care. Yeah. It'd be fun, you know. For us, it was... Uh, uh, Dora the Explorer. Oh, yeah. The Wiggles. Oh, yeah. Um, who's the guy that can fix it? Maybe Bob fix the Builder. It. Bob the Builder. Or, or is it Man- uh, Handy Manny? Handy Manny, the Mexican Bob the Builder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who was voiced by uh, uh, Fez? <laughs> From that 70s show. From that show. 70s show, yeah. yeah. Guillermo? Vilmer. 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 Vilmer blah, 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 I can blah, never blah. say his name. Right. But, yeah, he, he was Handy Manny. He also banged Lindsay Lohan, which is kind of gross. Um, I don't know, man. She's kind of cute. Or she was, yeah, like ten years ago before cocaine. Before cocaine and <laughs> and lots of alcohol. A hell of a drug, <laughs> right? But uh, so yeah, I've been watching that just because the boy wants to watch it, and I can't watch grown up shows with the boy around. Right. Um, but I've really wanted to go see it. Like, oh, you were talking about going yeah, to see that tonight. Yeah, I wanted to, but it's not going to happen. Uh, I haven't. The, I've never even seen the original one. Really? Yeah. I thought for whatever reason, like I thought the original was a mini series. I thought like the, on TV. Yeah, it was a made for T. It was a, the one with Tim Curry was originally a made for TV movie, and I could have swore it was a mini series. I mean, idea is what? There's a killer clown that lives in the sewers. Ish, but it's supernatural. Like, I never read the book either, so I should probably read the fucking book. It's a Stephen King novel. It's a Stephen King, yeah. And I'm a King fan, man. Like, I fucking dig Stephen King a lot. Like, I went to go see the Dark Tower. Dude, Dark Tower was amazing. Cool. He directed it? No, he wrote he, the, he wrote the, the series of books that it was based upon. And everybody, like, a lot of people are like, well, this is a shitty adaptation of the book. Well, it's not. It's a sequel to the series. Well, and plus you're having, you're having to take, what, how many books and fit it into a two-hour movie? Right, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah, it was only a 90-minute movie. But it was it was never meant to be an adaptation of the books. It was always meant to take place after the eighth book of the series. Got it. Or okay. after the so seventh book. It was a book. continuation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and so, like, I dug it. I don't know if they're going to end up making any sequels to it. I hope to God they do because they did a hell of a job with it. I loved it. I thought it was great. And uh, McConaughey did good? McConaughey was great. He was great. Idris Elba was amazing, as he always is. Yeah. You know? Um, and now I just found out at the end of the month, they're going to be uh, Netflix produced an original movie based on a Stephen King book I read when I was a kid called Gerald's Game. And the premise of the, of the book in the movie is this woman and her husband go up to their cabin in the woods. Because, you That's know... It's already scary. <laughs> I don't like that. And... Uh, they start having a little bit of kinky sex. Right. Okay, it's getting better. He handcuffs her to the bed. Okay, yeah. And then he gets starts getting a little too frisky for her, and she kicks him. And he has a heart attack and dies. And she's stuck. No way. Yeah, the entire movie is her stuck to the bed and not being able to get out because she's handcuffed to the bed. Oh, he's dead. And he's dead on the floor. Fuck. Yeah, dude. And, like, she starts having all these hallucinations because, like, she's not eating. She can't drink. She, there's no way that she can drink water because she's fucking strapped to this bed. And so, like, she starts having these flashbacks to when she was a kid. And, like, nope, this, nope, nope, nope. this dog comes in and starts eating her husband. And, Are you serious? Yeah. This dude, is a book? It was a book. Yeah. And they're going to make it into a they've, they've already made it. It's coming out on the 29th. <laughs> oh, dude, God, I'm stoked dude. to see it, man. Um, and then, like, there's this weird supernatural element going on, too, like this weird creeper that shows up at the very end. Yeah, it's... It's like basically death coming into... No, it's not death. It's like a... I, I don't want to spoil it, but then again, I don't really... I've never I read even it. heard of it. It was one of the, like, the lesser Stephen King novels. 
And like it's been probably twenty three, twenty four years since right. I read it. See, easily. The, the scary thing about movies like that is it's psychological. Oh, dude, that's the best part about it. Like, yeah. and it was one of those where like you never saw the monster, oh. but you always heard the monster. You know, to me, that's like the best best storytelling. Is that like they don't like straight up like show it to you. See, so don't get too kinky if you've got your girlfriend or wife or significant other tied up right. handcuffed to a bed. And if you do, use like easily escapable handcuffs. <laughs> use the safety cuffs. Yeah, right. Or uh you know what? Use a uh use a use a handkerchief or a scarf. Right. <laughs> Something and and tie like knots that aren't going to that are pretty easily escapable. I just couldn't imagine. <laughs> yeah. So that's coming out at the end of the month. I'm stoked to see that because I like I you know I what? really we like that. Go book. see that together. That would be fun. It's on Netflix. Oh, it's not even in theater? No, it's going to be a Netflix original movie. Okay. So I'm, I'm stoked for that, but yeah. I'm, That's going to be my homework then. I'll watch that. Word. Um, let's see. What else? I've been listening to the new Queens of the Stone Age came out, and I don't know if I'm into it. Like it's, There's another album that came out that was just got released. Yeah. I mean, it's from what I've heard, it's okay. It just it, It's one of those that did not grip me. On the first listen, um, dude, the new Kesha album. Have you heard the new Kesha album? No, it's called Rainbow. Holy the fuck, dude! My only memory of Kesha is that one song where she says, "Wake up in the morning feeling like P. P. Diddy. Diddy." Yeah, TikTok, dude. And she came to Aurora. No, she didn't. What happened? Um. I, I looked. There were promo videos and everything. Oh yeah! Apparently, there was a massive storm that night, and they canceled before she got on stage. And people are pissed because apparently Rivers Edge doesn't want to give their money back. Well, they could credit them towards other shows, right? But yeah, somebody that's going to see Kesha probably doesn't want to see Alabama, right? But dude, that Kesha album is awesome. Um, she's got like three country songs on the record. One of them, she does a duet with. Uh, Dolly Parton. Um, she's got two songs with Eagle, Eagles of Death Metal on here. She's got a song with uh, the Dap Kings of Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings fame. Wow. Yeah, dude. It's a great fucking... It's a big collaboration album? Well, she's only got three collaboration songs on here, or four collaboration songs, but like, it's a great record. It's really great. It's a, such an empowering record. Like, I, I can't recommend it enough. Like, it's that good. It's really good. I have my doubts with it being Kesha. Listen to it. I mean, would you put her on the same sort of musical landscape as like Lady Gaga? Oh God, no, absolutely not. But it's Lady still Gaga a good record. Like pop. No, dance. well, Lady Gaga for one is just an incredible musician right. to begin with. But Kesha put out a really solid record. It's a great record, man. It okay. really is. Fuck it, I'll give it a try. So, and then, it's got to be on Spotify, I would guess. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, so you've been listening to that? Yeah. Wow. It's a good record, man. More than Queens of the Stone Age? Yeah, actually, I have. And then, uh, tomorrow night, going to see Pink. Really? Yeah, dude, Pink's awesome. I love Pink. <laughs> I'm trying to remember some of her songs. She's a feisty one. I'm coming up, oh, yes. so you yes, better yes, yes, get yes, this yes. party started. Yeah, dude. Like, I saw her with Kirsten. Where do you get, like, where are all these shows that you're seeing? Uh, it's been so long since I've been to, like, a A, good a big concert. show. Right. Well, when we saw Tool, it was at Rosemont. When we saw Green Day, it was at uh, Wrigley. Eric Wrigley. And then uh, Pink is at Tinley Park. Shitley Park. The amphitheater? Yeah. Right. But we got lawn seats. Is so. she uh, anybody opening up for her? I have no idea. I don't care. The show oh. starts at 8, so I can't imagine that See, there is an opening artist. I don't know enough artist. of her songs to dude, facilitate the first, a whole concert. Dude, the first time I went to go see her, I didn't really know all of her songs either. Like, I knew the Truth About Love album, and that was really it. I knew a couple, and the Misunderstood album, which is the one that had right. Get This Party Started. The, her, that was like her big breakout. And I really didn't know anything, really, aside from those two songs, maybe a sprinkling of songs here and there. Dude, she's fucking amazing live. Like, I compare her to Pat Benatar. Like, she's like the Pat Benatar of this generation. Like, she's excellent live. 
Just she amazing. To, well, she doesn't. Does she play an instrument? She plays guitar and a little bit of piano. Right. But like, she's got good stage presence. Excellent stage presence, and she can sing her ass off. Right. And it's not like lip syncing. Like you could hear her breathe in between words and stuff like that. Like she's the real deal, man. She is fucking amazing. And like, you gotta let us know how that goes, dude. When is that? Is that coming up soon? Tomorrow night. Yeah, next time we record, let's get a report back on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're gonna you're you you'll get it because like the last time we saw her, we saw her at the United Center. Dude, she blew me away. Like I was a casual Pink fan. Like I liked. Did she have a full band with her? Oh yeah, like she had a full on band with her. Um, like a whole on big stage setup. I mean, she she owned it, man. And then like the last song, she did this whole like trapeze, like bungee yoga <laughs> thing where she's flipping around over the crowd while she's singing while singing while singing yeah dude yeah i saw mary poppins uh this is going to tie in by the way in case you're wondering there's a new mary poppins movie coming yeah. out i saw her at the paramount theater production hot whoever played her was hot <laughs> and then she flew over my head and of course i looked up to of see course she did you know because you're a perv. Any, any upskirt action. No. Uh, but it was awesome. That was awesome. So was it how, recently? Uh, no, it was probably like a couple years ago, two, three years ago. But uh, was she just flying over your heads? No, because we were in the balcony. Okay. So we had... But she came out over the audience. and She came out the, over the audience. There was like a pillar in the middle of the of the floor. So like she would like she did the, a balance and she was doing all these flips and shit like that because she had like bungee cords attached to her sides right. and then she landed on the pillar and then like she was flying all over dude it was great it That's was crazy. really cool like she puts on a hell of a show man and tickets weren't that expensive this time around so we're like yeah what the hell we'll go see her I haven't heard about I haven't heard from her in forever yeah it's been about five years since she put or four about four years since she put out her album her last album and she's got a new one coming up so but so- we haven't heard from our correspondent? No, Jesse's been and oddly you were silent. In? Did you see him when you went no, to No, you know what? We just I just couldn't make it happen. I, I wanted to. I really did, but I just I, I mean, couldn't make it happen. People knew that you were there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I he and I had uh connected on Facebook via Messenger, but we were, there was just Cuz you went to the land of deep fried on a stick, everything. Yes. Yeah. We actually went to a brewery called uh what the fuck was the name of the brewery we went to? But it had awesome beer. <laughs> um, it was this uh, little brewery they had just opened up recently. Well, I got a friend of mine in Columbia. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> You're looking at your face. Yeah, well, it'll tell people it'll, you may know. It'll tell me where I checked in like a week ago. Uh, here and we go. You were saying earlier that the attendance record was broken the day that you went. Yeah, for so that day, for that massive, particular day. People everywhere. Yes. Let's see here. Where was I? Where was I? And is most of the fair centered around Lakeville. food vendors? No, I mean, it's a fair. So it's like vendors, food vendors, farming shit. But it's shit. like far out food. Like the, Sometimes, yeah. I mean, but then again, you got your standard like... Fried grasshoppers dipped in chocolate. God, I wish. That would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, it, the, beer, the brewery that we were at was the Lakeville Brewing Company. And it was crazy because, like, behind... I've heard of Lakeville. Yeah. It's yeah. a tiny little tiny little town. And the brewery has, like, this entire, like, maybe a quarter acre behind it that's fenced in. That's all their hops? No. It's, like, an open area where you could have seating and stuff, but you could bring your kids. And they had shit for your kids to do. That's awesome. They're like a very family-oriented brewery, if you could have such a thing. <laughs> They're like every once a month or so, they do a family night where like, they get bouncy houses and all kinds of shit set up for the kids, and you just bring your kids and let them run. You come in, you drink microbrews, you eat food. And Dude, and their food was fantastic. And their food was excellent. I had a, They had a lamb burger. Dude. Good stuff. Yeah, with t- it was a tzatziki on it. Right. Dude, it was good shit, man. You're exciting the Greek in me. I know, right? So, but yeah, it's good. If you're ever in uh, Lakeville, Minnesota, Minnesota, go. It's Minnesota. it's absolutely worth it. It's fucking worth it, dude. So, but yeah, so the the Minneapolis or the Minnesota State Fair was, I mean, it was a state fair. You know, you go in and you, no entrance fee, right? 
Oh, you know, you had to pay to get in. Really? Yeah. What are you talking about? Five bucks? To be honest with you, I don't know because um, Kirsten's friend's daughter won tickets somehow. Oh, nice. So all of us got in for free, which was dope. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's typical fair food. You know, you got your fried Twinkies and all that shit. But like, <laughs> I guarantee you, somebody listening right now just yawned. Yeah, I'm sure. Dude, somebody said, hey, Siri, on a podcast that I listened to today, right. you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Did it work on it your phone? It totally like, set my phone off. Hey, Siri. <laughs> hey, Siri. So, God, we're just dickheads right now. <laughs> um, Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was cool. I mean, it was it was like going to the sandwich fair, just on a much larger scale. You know, uh, Grayson. Had the biggest... Yes, there is a town called Sandwich in Illinois. Yes, and there's a town right next to it called Plano. Yes, so and it's... in Sandwich, there is a bar called Club Sandwich. Is there seriously? Yeah, nice. But the sandwich fair is actually technically the DeKalb County Fair, and it's the lar- the oldest fair in Illinois. It's like 135 years or some shit. And they're like renowned for their eclairs and cream puffs, from do, what I hear. And their saltwater taffy. So I, I hate saltwater taffy. Oh my god, it's so good. So, but uh, fuck but, saltwater taffy. <laughs> right in its mouth. <laughs> I don't know why I just got angry about saltwater taffy. No, you're the only person ever to get mad about saltwater taffy. Fuck, fuck. the process <laughs> of making saltwater taffy. <laughs> but they, dude, their <laughs> lemonade shakeups at the sandwich fair. Dude, Good shit, right? Dude, the lemonade shakeups are amazing. Pork chop on a stick? Yeah. Anything Ga- on a stick is pretty good. Gator on a stick? Handcuffed to a bed on a stick? I don't know about all that. Get a heart attack and get stuck there and <laughs> dog will eat your husband. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap this up because I'm about to fall nice, asleep here. That was a nice note to end on. Right? Dog eat your husband. All right. So, so all right, everybody. Well, you guys have yourselves a great Morning, afternoon, and or evening that you're listening to this. Is it Monday right now? It is maybe. Well, yeah, this will be released on a yes. Monday. I don't know what Monday. Well, I don't know if part three of the Damon episode is going to show before this or after this. But uh, it will be a Monday when you guys receive this in your ear holes. Yes, if you're listening, hey, don't worry, man. It's going to be a great week this week. Handle your shit. That's right. And if you want, reach out to us, 224-325-4235. That is 224-325-4235. Leave us a voicemail. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can also reach out to us at uh, at Pop Goulash on Twitter. Yep. You can reach out to us at popgoulash42 at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And uh, find me on Instagram at uh, pop underscore goulash underscore Ruben. Or even Carlos at Mr. Hot Sauce. That's on Grinder. No, I mean, yes. <laughs> I'm Grinder. Yes. In, I'm in, in Instagram, Instagram. Yes. <laughs> no. Or Twitter. I'm getting them all mixed up, but yes. Grinder, you know, Find Twitter, me anywhere, Facebook. Find him, <laughs> and then talk slowly and yeah. into his ear hole, and make sure it's nice and moist. Oh yeah. All right, for Pop Goulash this week, I'm Ruben, and I'm Carlos. Be kind to each other. Yeah.